Today is our last session on the topic of likability and our last session on customer service. During this session, I want all of us to become more aware of what our bodies are silently communicating to our customers and to ourselves. Body language can reflect what we feel. It can physiologically change what we feel. It can send signals that affect how we are perceived, and it can send signals that affect how people around us feel. With some body language, meaning and perception can vary by person, gender, or culture. However, studies have shown that some body language is both reflexive and universal to humans and sometimes even animals. This reflexive type of body language is where we spend our time today. Let's start by exploring the mind-body connection. How we feel can reflexively trigger how we position our body. For example, if we feel physically threatened, our nerves may signal our adrenal gland to release adrenaline, which prepares our body for a fight. This adrenaline release results in posture changes we may not even be consciously aware of, such as closing our palms to get ready for a fight. Conversely, how we position our body also directly impacts our brain chemistry. For example, poor posture, including slumping shoulders, can change the amount of oxygen we breathe and trigger our endocrine system's stress response, including the release of cortisol, the stress hormone making us feel anxious. Further, our brains are hardwired to perceive the body language and facial expressions of others on the subconscious level, specifically our amygdala, which is also the part of the brain responsible for assessing danger and threats. For example, if we observe someone with palms closed, we may subconsciously perceive that person is ready to fight and therefore dangerous, triggering our own fight-or-flight stress response, even if that person has no intention of causing harm and even if we believe consciously that the person has no intention of a person causing us harm. So let's talk about body language and how we can optimize our posture during customer interactions to communicate the right messaging and avoid communicating the wrong messaging. Let's start with your head and shoulders. Keep in mind, because body position changes how you feel, you can do this pose even if you are talking on the phone and not visible to a customer. Tilt your chin slightly upward. This exposes your neck, the most vulnerable part of your body, which signals your own brain and your listener's brain that you are comfortable in your surroundings. You can expose your neck because you do not feel threatened. Slightly tilt the head so that your ear on one side is closer to a 45-degree angle to express empathy in active listening. Shoulders should be back and posture should be comfortable. Maintain eye contact, ideally between 50 to 70% of the conversation, with eyes slowly and casually averting to the side every four to five seconds, then slowly returning. Align your nose with the person speaking. Ensure your expression is appropriate for the topic of conversation, usually a warm smile. When you do smile, make sure you smile with your cheeks and eyes, not just your mouth, so that your expression does not look fake. Keep your palms open and visible. Again, your open palms signal comfort in your surroundings. If standing, stand with feet shoulder width apart and don't lock or tense your knees. You can put one foot slightly forward. This conveys you are entering the other person's space to listen more intently. If seated, rest one ankle on the other knee or keep feet flat and at least shoulder width apart. Or if you cross your ankles, extend your legs fully. In this posture, you are expressing interest in what your customer has to say, but also confidence in yourself and comfort in your surroundings. You are also being careful not to trigger any negative neural or endocrine response that would cause you or your customer stress or anxiety. Last but not least, if you find you are speaking to someone who has taken on an aggressive posture like your palms closed and you do not feel like you are in danger, try casually moving back a few feet and either taking a seated or leaning position. Calm your breathing and slowly try to smile compassionately. Switch to less eye contact holding it one to two seconds before slowly averting for four to five seconds. This may help them disengage. If it doesn't, suggest continuing the conversation at another time. If you do feel an immediate threat, leave the situation quickly and get appropriate help. We hope this series has been helpful. Businesses vary vastly in size and types of work, but at their root, they are all dependent on their customers for survival. We hope this series has helped you better serve your customers. Thank you.